Today, we're going to talk about uh, our pullback trades. We're going to show you examples of the trades. We're going to show you what we're looking for in those pullback trades and why they work so well and continue to work so well. In fact, I was just looking at a curve looking at trade room results over the last four years and the value of of each year or the profits for each year are still, after all this time, trending upward each year. The uh, percentage of trades has remained relatively flat uh, as far as the percentages of wins and losses. And I'm going to show you this stuff in a minute. But the income from those trades has actually gone up a little bit. So uh, it's kind of it's interesting that people ask me all the time, well, is sometime, is this going to get oversaturated to the point where it just doesn't seem to work anymore? And it actually seems to be wo working in the other direction. It's it's getting better all the time. So, all right. So uh, I've got to do this. These uh, risk disclosures, uh, basically saying don't trade with money you can't afford to lose. Most traders do lose money when they uh, jump into trading. Past result don't mean anything about future results. Okay, so we got that. All right, so why are we doing pullback trading? And why has it become such a popular thing in in the most, uh, I don't know, five to 10 years, it's become more and more and more popular and starts making much more sense to people who have tried the, you know, the trend following, trying to get the, the big wins uh, with like, and, and trying to learn how to be a single contract trader and going for these long runs and make a bunch of money, um, people are finally starting to figure out, well, that's just not the nature of the markets today. That, that has stopped working for the most part for most people. So these pullback trades are ways that we can, if you have trouble managing your emotions and, you know, not doing things you're not supposed to do when you're sitting and waiting for a trade to work out. Pullback trading was one of the criteria when I came up with this was that, that I knew for a fact that I was terrible at managing my emotions. I kept being told uh, by all of the gurus and everything I read and everything I watched as quite simply just manage your emotions and you'll be fine. And I failed miserably at that. So when I came up with this, one of the first things was, is what can I do to keep from having to manage my emotions? How can, what, how can I do this? Be a day trader without the emotions becoming the thing that that really ruins me. Um, and so the first thing I thought of was, well, low exposure. I got to get in and out of trades quickly so that I don't have time to become stressed out and to have all of these emotions and all of these um, insecurities about whether I did the right thing or not. You know, no confidence at all. The other thing is, is that having these quick trades, we know more immediately what the markets are doing like right now. We don't know that whatever's happening right now is going to have a long-term effect. And when I say long-term, because of the way we trade, that could be 15 minutes from now, an hour from now, or a day from now, Okay. And for a lot of people, an hour and a day is short term. But for us, that's really long term type trading. We're looking for conditions that are similar to what you might consider a bouncing ball. You know, if you drop a ball on the floor, you have an expectation that if you know all the conditions, the conditions of the ball and the conditions of the atmosphere around the ball and the conditions of the floor that you're expecting the ball to bounce off of, you know from experience generally what to expect from that bouncing ball. And that bounce is going to be immediate. What happens five minutes from now to that ball? You don't really know. You really don't have any idea, especially in the markets now because there are so many influences in the market that affect 
the you know the markets in such a way that you know you may not have gotten into your trade based on the current conditions you know so things change very very quickly and you can see that on trading charts and if i point it out to you it'll be very obvious i mean it's not obvious to a lot of people but if i point it out to you it probably be pretty obvious and these trades are real easy to master okay these pullback trades they're very clear rules, very clear um, indicators, and it's basically just a, a linear qualifying process. If this exists and this exists and this and then this and then this, pull the trigger. Okay, so we're looking for a lot of confluences to uh, of market characteristics to get us into and to manage a trade. Okay. So what we're looking for is strength, market strength in a downtrend or market weakness in an uptrend, okay? So that's telling us if we can get, if we see those things happening, we know something's about to change, okay? So that's why we're, we're looking at momentum because we know momentum cannot, will not, will never be sustained in, in the trading market. Exhaustion is going to set in. But before you have exhaustion, you must have momentum. So we're watching momentum so we can anticipate the exhaustion or the pullback, okay? We're watching, we can also tell when the big boys have something, they're, they're doing something to the markets. Have you ever been sitting and watching and everything's just kind of drifting around, going sideways, and then bam, something happens? Well, that's not a whole bunch of us retail traders deciding all at the same time to do something. Okay? That's most likely an institutional that is uh, that has an auto trader of some sort or a quant or an HFT or whatever that is manipulating the markets. Now they try to they try to cover their tracks, but if you know where to look, then you know where they're most likely manipulating the markets. So we're looking for the rate of processed orders and I don't mean orders being placed and then removed. I mean orders that are processed through the exchange, all right? Orders that are actually processed through the exchange, the, the rate increases to the point where it has to be um, a, a mechanical interaction with the markets. And if that's the case, you got to figure, well, they're doing it because they're going to create a reaction. That's how they make their money, okay? We're also looking for a type of volume. I get people ask me why I don't have volume indicators on our chart, but we actually do. They just don't look like your typical volume indicators. Of course, I'm going to show you this in just in a few minutes. But what we're looking for is a churning activity. When you see, for example, a bar that's just took off, it's going crazy, and it went from zero to 100, like, in an instant, you go, wow, that, there's you know, a lot going on, and there was a lot of buying in that bar, but that bar may reach its peak, and suddenly all those buyers are running into a group of sellers that have just been sitting there waiting. They're not exhausted. They're not even in the markets yet. So the exhausted buyers trade right into not exhausted sellers, so we get this churning volume all of a sudden. Well, there's a big flag right there that says, hey, there's a really good chance that these exhausted buyers are not going to be able to get past these not exhausted sellers. And if that's the case, price is going to pull back at least a little bit. Remember, we don't know that it's going to, that we're not looking for reversals, okay? That is not what we do. We're looking for regular and cyclical pullbacks from a trend. Okay, we're also looking for those climax up thrust bars, the bars that I just told you about when you're just sitting there, you're probably falling asleep, your price is going sideways, and all of a sudden, 
these huge bars blasting out of a channel that it's been in. And you get these huge bars. That's what we're looking for. That's where we want to read that strength so we can anticipate the weakness. And, of course, we look at support and resistance because everybody else is looking at support and resistance, and that's what gives them value. So if there are these areas of, of expected support and resistance, well, what a great place for price to pull back when, when price runs into these areas of support and resistance. You couple that with the exhaustion and the order manipulation and the churning, and that slams into a, a major area of support or resistance. Well, the only thing that's better than that is divergence on top of all of that. And divergence means when price and momentum disagree with each other, they typically are going to run together. But when they get out of sync with each other, price is going to try to catch up with momentum, okay? This is this is huge. If you get nothing else out of this, divergence can change your trading if you know how to use it, okay? So let's look at this. This is what I was talking about. This is what our setups look like, okay? This particular one I'm going to talk about is a rock star, okay? So we've got price is a, kind of in a channel, right? It's all channeling here. I'm not very good at these tools, but let's see. So we're in we're in a channel, right? And we have these relatively small bars just kind of drifting around. And this is when we all get kind of kind of bored and we we just kind of drifting off. And then all of a sudden, price takes off, okay? So we, we want to see a breakout of this channel. So this channel is like right around in here. And we want to see price break out in a big way, not just drift out of the channel. We want to see much bigger bars than these little bars back here, okay? So we want to see some big bars breaking out of that channel. This indicator where you see the black and then it's turning gray, the bar, the bar color goes from black to gray to a lighter gray, and it'll go to like an almost white color. This is our momentum indicator or our mometer. So we know when these bars start getting real light, we have really strong momentum, and we know that momentum cannot and will not be sustained over time. Price has to pull back. Why? Because traders take profits, okay? Even in the strongest uptrend, and everybody's trading in the same direction, traders got to take profits, and they're going to do it at certain levels. When they take their profits, price might pull back a little bit, and then it could go again, or it could be a reversal. That's the thing. We don't know. We're not even going to try to pick up reversals. But we're looking for this strong increase in momentum. I mean, it seems really obvious. And if you're sitting there on your computer that has your charts on it, pull up any charts from today and look at, you'll see this happen all the time, this pattern all the time, over and over and over again. And these bars are getting much larger. Now we've got this climax bar here, much larger than the other bars. And the ticks, remember I said that the volume coming into the bar or the orders being processed has exceeded a rate where it's likely retail traders are placing all of these orders. It's unlikely. So that means it must be something else. Well, what else is it? And what can we learn from whatever, whatever else that is? So if we go and we start looking at other bars 
and we apply, this is called our speed tick indicator. If we go and we look at other bars that has a speed tick, we'll notice most of the time something happens right after a speed tick bar. Okay. The bars get overbought. You see that pink outline on these bars? That's telling us that we're in an overbought condition, which is the beginning of exhaustion. And this dot tells us we're in a churning, that that's the volume where we're, the volume is churning. So lots and lots of buying, 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 buying. They trade they, right into these sellers that are sitting up here at this line of resistance waiting. Okay. And the resistance, most people, the, a lot of traders don't want to trade into that resistance. They want to stop buying at this point. And they find that this is a dandy place to start taking some profits. Okay. And for us, this is the, this is the sweet spot right here. This is what we're looking for. Well, once we have all of these confluences, and we get these all the time, this isn't a rare event. This is, on average, we average about six trades per trading session. All right, so that is our rock star trade. Right here is where we enter the trade on the open of this bar. Now, here's the beauty. So there's a lot going on up here. Look at all these indicators. So when you think about it, we have there there is nobody knows everything that's going to go on exactly all the time in the market. You can find a sweet spot and and then you exploit that sweet spot as much as possible. But sometimes you can actually do better than that sweet spot because this doesn't tell us that instantly price is going to just drop. There can still be a bit of a push left. There could still be some buyers in there that are still trying to push this up. So what happens a lot of times is this bar opens and then there's still some upward pressure. Okay, we have a seven tick stop that we, we use the uh, a bracket order and we put on a seven tick stop. So price can actually back up. And if you're paying attention and if you haven't entered yet, you could enter here and get a better fill than trying to sell it from here. That happens a lot. We have some of our traders have adopted a strategy not to get in at the open of this bar but to wait and see what this bar is going to do, see if they're going to get a better fill or not. Sometimes they just miss a trade because it opens and, and it does drop. But a lot of times it opens and then backs up. So you get a better opportunity. That's the nice thing about this trade setup is once you learn the rules, you can tune those rules to suit your style of trading. Okay. All right, let's look at what it, what this trade setup actually looks like and what the trade looks like using the static Superdome. Now, this is how I put on trades. If you want to see that again, we, we recommend, and you can see why we recommend the static Superdome. All right, so again, this is the trade setup. This is it blasting off. This is it getting overbought, which is the pink outline, which is really, uh, that's one of my favorite things to see. Then we have the speed tick. And I always say in the trade room, we're waiting on a speed tick because we might have all of these other things. But we know if we don't get a speed tick, there's not going to be a trade setup. We got the pullback alert and some other uh, indicators. And now we're looking down here at the countdown timer so we can anticipate the open of the next bar. 
okay? So you'll notice we get down to 8765. Okay, now, you notice I haven't put on a trade yet because obviously there's a time. You have to take the time to get the trade on. So this bar open with the rock star. This is not a trade. This looks like what some people see when they use chart trader. This is a little tool called OTS, open target stop. Um, it's only a little tool to help us visualize where the open price is relative to our support and resistance line. So this is just a little helper tool. This is not a trade in and of itself. This is only a tool, okay? So I've made a decision to go ahead and put on the trade. Now, I went ahead and I got my trade on, but I also put on some extra trades. And this is me because I've been doing this for a long time. This is not what I recommend that new traders do. New traders trade a single contract, don't worry about scaling in or anything. But what I want to do is I want to get the open price. But if it also continues to back up, I have a lot of confidence in the fact that this is going to create a pullback. Now, is it going to create, uh, oh, is it going to keep going and then pull back? Even better, right? So when I'm putting on a couple of more orders here, to just in case price backs up and I can get a better fill. As it turns out, only one of those got filled on this particular trade, okay? All right, so where, what are our targets and stops? So we put on bracket orders, meaning what you saw it. When I put on the trade, my target and my stop are already there. And when the trade hits either the target or your stop, then the other one disappears, okay? So that's all part of the ATM uh, advanced trade management on NinjaTrader. All right, we have a five tick target and a seven tick stop. Now, <clears throat> a lot of people don't understand this. So five tick target and seven tick stop. I have a, a lot of people that don't understand that, particularly if a trade could continue to go in your favor. You ever try to follow a trade and you just stay in it longer than maybe you should have and eventually you go, man, I wish I had just gotten out of that trade when it was profitable. If only I had done that. So when I started developing this, I had a friend that I talked to online and he said something once. He said, you know, nobody's ever gone broke putting money in the bank. And I thought about that and I thought, you know, I want to reduce the amount of emotions that I'm, that I'm uh, having. And I want to get in and out of trades quickly and I want to identify a sweet spot. So rather than, and I tried for like six months to, you know, to try to stretch it out to more and more and more ticks, but I found, and a lot of our traders have found that if you just take your win and put it in the bank and wait for the next one, it is so much less stressful. And when I started doing that, I started actually seeing some forward progress in my trading. So the mission was to learn to become a winning trader and build on the fact that you know you're a winning trader. Okay. Now we also have a seven tick stop. Sometimes we do take a full stop on a trade because it just takes off and we end up getting a minus seven. Sometimes the conditions that got us into the trade change and we want to now manage our stop and make it shorter. So we might 
we might take a three or four tick loss instead of seven. We start with seven, but our trade management is by shortening our stop. That's how we manage our trades, okay? So five ticks is a hard target, and the, the stop is only made smaller, never bigger. We never move our target, for one. We never move our stops out. That was always a mistake that I made when I was just sure price was going to go in my direction. I was sure of it. So I'd keep moving my stop, keep moving my stop, <laughs> keep moving. And eventually you go, oh, God, I got to just, I got to stop this. I got to get out. It's going to go forever. I'm so far behind. And so you finally bail out with a huge loss. And then what happened? I'm almost to the tick. What happened? It finally turns around and goes in your direction. And it would have been a winner if you hadn't bailed out. That was my experience with trading most of the time. So. I decided that is going to end for me. That no more. When when we hit our our hard target, I'm going to put the money in the bank and I'm going to wait for the next setup. If I get stopped, I'm going to be ready for the next setup. Okay? I want to be out of the markets as much as possible. The markets are a dangerous place. You don't want your money in the markets. The longer it's in the markets, the more likely it's going to get taken from you. So I don't put on any runners and I don't put on any trailing stops. Hard target. That's it. Now, that's me. The nice thing about this system, you can tune it any way you like. You can tune it and say, you know what? I am going to put on runners or I am going to put on trailing stops. And that's fine. I'm telling you how I have become successful at this and how a lot of other people have. But a lot of other people has also tuned the system to be slightly different than the way I trade it. Okay. But you just have to do the testing to make sure that, you know, you have, you still have an edge. So here's the next trade setup called a naked rock star. It looks an awful lot like the rock star, doesn't it? But there's one difference. There's no major lines of support or resistance. So because of that, more confluence of different types of confluences are required. Okay? For example... We'll just go through this again. Price is channeling, right? Price is channeling. Price breaks out of a channel. Same as what we just talked about. Bars are starting to get bigger. Momentum increases. The ticks start coming in really fast. That's the speed tick indicator. Nothing happens without a speed tick. Now, a requirement for this, what we call naked rock star trade, and by the way, it's called naked because it doesn't have, it's not covered by a resistance line, okay? So that's what makes it naked. Somebody called it that once many, many years ago, uh, and it just, the name just stuck. So that's why we call it naked is because there's no support or resistance behind the line. The buying and selling starts to churn. So I either need this pullback alert. This is the volume indicator we use, which tells us not just that there's a lot of volume, but what type of volume is coming into the bar. Then we've got this overbought condition. So one or both of these conditions are required for a naked rock star trade setup. Okay. So we're not slamming into major resistance lines like we were in the rock star trade setup, but we're still expecting there to be some divergence that will create this rock star. And again, 
order entries on the open of this bar or better. Okay? So let's take a look at some trades. And I've got a bunch of them. We can go through these. And But the thing is, um, we could go through a bunch of these. But it's the same thing over and over and over again. Okay? So we've got price was in a channel. It drops hard. Now, it, it we don't know how far out of a channel it's going to drop. But at some point, it's going to decide. It's gonna, well, here was a winner right here. I didn't even show that one. Uh, price came down. We had a speed tick, oversold, pullback alert, rock star, price bounced up. So now we're watching the next one. Another rock star. But look, if we couldn't get filled here, we get a better fill. Watch. So we got a better fill right here. And now we're just waiting for it to bounce back up. So by the time it gets back to the open of the bar, we're we're practically there. Look at the size of this bar relative to the previous bars. Obviously something happened here, right? There's our rock star, there's our trade. Got a better fill now, got filled near the open, almost at the open. So there are people who see this and they go, oh, I could never, uh, it's too way too fast for me. It's actually not because you've got, we've got the countdown timer, right? So I'll show you on the next trade how much time you have to prepare for the trade. Now, we got 40 seconds. I've got a speed tick and I know I've got resistance up here. And I had this big bar, and it's overbought. I got 30 seconds. Speed tick resistance. Ignore this rock star because it was for the last bar. We're looking for the open of the next bar. Look how much time I've got. So the conditions exist. All I have to do now is be ready to put on a trade on the open of the next bar. Now, how do you think you get good at this? You practice. And the beauty is you can practice this in market replay or, or in the play, using the playback connection. So instead of sitting in the afternoons and trying to trade the afternoon session between noon and 4.30 or 5, um, you can instead, you know, you might get two or three setups in the afternoon session, or instead you could go and practice for a couple of hours and do 20 or 30 trades and practice them so watch where price is dropping this is a different trade it looks uh, it looks like so many of the others right but that's the nice thing is it's the same thing over and over and over again So we're slamming down into support. Bars oversold. Speed tick. Now I'm just waiting for the open of the next bar. So I don't even know what this is going to be. Um, whether it's a speed tick trade, rock star, naked rock star, I have no idea what it's going to qualify for on the open of the next trade. But I do know there's a potential for it to be one of those. So you can see over here on the left, I've got my my uh, mouse ready on my Superdome and put my trade on. It's only five ticks. Five ticks. How do you make any money at five ticks? Well, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you how and why I've been doing this for 15 years. And we have traders in our trade room that have been coming for at least 10 years. Yeah, we've got, I mean, if you come and visit us at the trade room, you start asking questions and ask to talk to other traders or whatever, There, many of them are, have been there two, three, four, five, 
10, 12 years. And they come every day. And if this didn't work, I'm pretty sure they'd probably stop. So there's the results, but I'm going to show you over the last, oops, that's the wrong one. Oh, no, that's the right one. I just didn't update the slide. That's supposed to say 2020 to 2024, or 2023, last year. So these numbers are right. Over 6,000 trades. We're doing about 250 trading days a year, three hours a day. We're averaging a little over six trades uh, per session or two trades per hour. Each tick is about is five win uh, five ticks for a winning trade. And the average losing trade is around five ticks because a lot of the trades, like I said, are managed. Okay. And then what you're going to see, uh, the numbers uh, already has the fees and commissions deducted from the totals. Okay. So we're at about our trade room trades. And again, <clears throat> read this disclaimer. These are people who have practiced. They've been coming to the trading room. They've done the hard work and they've, they've gotten really good at this. Okay. You can too. There's, there's no, there's no magic here. You just have to decide it's something worth working on. So we've got about a 78% winning uh, percentage. Uh, if you've traded one contract on each of the trades, it's like $150,000. But eventually what you want to be doing is trading more contracts. Okay? Three, four, five, six contracts per trade. That's how you start making money at this. Okay? All right. So we have a special offer for you guys. 20% off. Um, we're also doing a kind of a golden ticket thing that you may have seen on the left-hand side of the screen here that um, <clears throat> I'm going for the first, well, it was first three people. Now it's the next two because we had somebody take advantage of this offer um, for as soon as it went out. Uh, some people wait for our offers to go out an email. Um, so as soon as that offer went out. So now we have two left. Um, so. Basically, I'm going to give you a, a, a VIP concierge service of everything intentional trader. You know, I'll, I'll uh, set everything up for you on your computer doing a remote support. We're going to go over the practice tools. I'll show you how to practice and how to get set up for your practice sessions. We'll do uh, a tour of the members area and show you what tools are available to you there. Um, we'll go over all of the indicator documentation, the all of the other education materials. We'll talk about, you saw me uh, using the Superdome, so we'll talk about that. Um, anything you want to know during these sessions, anything you want to know about NinjaTrader, just ask me and I'll, I'll do the best I can to help you go over that. If you've been struggling and you need somebody to talk to and somebody who has been on the path you're on and had made it to the other side and you need some advice or you just want to unload, I'm there for that as well, okay? So we can have a little trader therapy session, as you might imagine, since I've been doing this for 15 years. Um I, I might have a little bit of advice that can help you avoid some of the obstacles that either you have run across or you will run across, okay? So because I've taken the knocks for you, I can try to help you avoid some of those, okay? So it's anywhere between one and three hours of this assistance, depending on what program you decide to invest in, okay? And we have a, a deal with PayPal. You know, they'll let you pay monthly or they'll let you uh, pay in four different payments with no interest and different kind of stuff for depends on the product that you decide to, to choose. 